Well, hello everybody. My name is Dr. J.D. Swanson. I'm the author of Karate Science. And what I'd like to do today is talk about the kick Mawashigiri, or dog taking a pee kick. So what I would like to do is we're going to talk about just the basics of the kick and then talk about it with the idea of Gyakuzuki that quite often follows it. Just sort of step by step. And I'll give you some idea of things that I think are quite important. The other thing that's really neat or that's important to talk about from the beginning is that there's multiple versions of Mawashigiri, depending on which organization and whether you're a tournament versus basic. The one I'm talking about today is the simple, classic, lift the leg up behind, come all the way around, that sort of idea, the Mawashi feeling of the kick. And so we're going to talk about that, that in particular today. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey, us. Very good. So Mawashigiri is defined by this sort of classic knee behind you, lifting up, up kind of position. So that's the key thing, that's the most important thing is this idea of high and tight. And so particular, one of the things that's really important is that you've got to be flexible enough to do the kick. So lots of things like basic hurdling stretching, things like that are really important. So classic hurdle stretch from here, you'll see a lot of people have their foot sticking out like so, not so good. Try if you can and put the foot flat and sitting down just so that you don't feel that pressure on your knee. Ideally, you want to be 50-50, but uh, sorry, you want your, your gap to be this nice 90-90. But that depends on your flexibility and what you can actually manage. So allow this sort of position to happen, both butt cheeks on the ground. This may kill you just sitting here like this, but this is the sort of idea that you want. From there, of course, you can stretch over the knee, over the hip, and so forth to really work on those hips. Um, for me, I'm not a naturally flexible person, right? Genetics just didn't kick in for me. Um, I have a fusion in, in the back of my hip onto my backbone, which is kind of funny because that prevents a little bit of my basal sort of moving or, or hip tilting, and it gives me a, a, a very slight lean that I work with my whole life. So karate is really not the sport for me. But as you work um, and keep the hip tilted in, it, it's important to work on that. So things that I really recommend is working on yoga, right? Um, I personally, I do Les Mills, um, they, so shout out to them. Their, their workouts, their um, body combat and their, their stretching workouts, uh, body flow are just amazing to help work on that hip flexibility. So if you're like me, those are places that I go. So what we're going to do is let's start working on the kick itself. So just making Zenko Tadachi, all you're going to do from here is just itch, lift and grab. Itch, lift and grab. Things that are important, number one, you want a straight line between your hip and your knee. You want. So not lifting here, but rather lifting behind you. A lift behind you. Grab your ankle each time. The next thing you want is you want your shin bone to be parallel to the ground. So it's here, grab. Here, grab. Here, grab. That feeling. So what I would like you to do is repeat that on both sides. 20, 30 reps just to get your body warmed up. Off you go. Very good. Second part that's key to the kick is this idea of allowing the hip to move. So as you lift up, try slow motion. And what this does is this helps build up hip strength in your hip. So it's here, lift, boom, then then two, then down. So try very, very slow kicks. Keep a hold of that grip and keep this angle here as you move around. So as you can see, as I lift, I'm not here, then closing the door. Rather, I'm moving my whole body around. My bottom foot will shift as it needs. So anyone who tells you to keep your foot still, ignore them, they're kind of trying to break you. Allow the foot to move on the floor as much as it needs to. There's no prescribed minimum or maximum distance for this. It depends on your hip flexibility, right, your body. But it must move. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to maintain this flatness here as I bring my hip around and as your foot of course just like everything else moves as a consequence of your body center shifting yeah my body center is coming round and forward so of course this foot must shift yeah makes sense so don't inhibit that so we're here yeah and so all you want to do is lift 
make sure, keep straight. Boom, then just feel whole body. Du, 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 du. Once you're there, let the foot go, bring it back, place it down. Okay, that's the feeling that you want, is that nice sort of warm, warm. So, key, key here. If I take my handy dandy jandal, right, I can take this, eh, stuff it in my gate, and it's not going to get scrunched up, it's not going to bend. It's going to remain here, throughout, I lift, whoop, then I go around, oh, here, then let go, back, place down. That's the feeling you want. Don't scrunch the jandal. Don't, this, keep behind as it goes. Okay, so practice that slow motion kick. Grab, expand, pull back, place down. That feeling. Practice that 10, 20 times, come back. Press pause, give it a go. Excellent, okay, the next step is we're gonna now think here, Think lift, round, now just work on the snap, then place, right, so it's one, boom, two, snap, place, right, weapon can be ball of the foot, and step your choice, give it a go, again, much simpler, we're just building it, give it a go, press pause, excellent, the next step, from here now, lift, and what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you use this arm to counter rotate. Yes, I know you shouldn't do it in the final kick, but it helps you. It's a training aid, right? It's helping you get the body momentum that you need to get your hips round. The key is, though, is this time, up till now, what we've done is we've sort of brought our kick round, right? So we've kind of brought our kick round, and then we've released the kick here. This time, what I want you to do is you're going to lift, and then I want you to use that momentum and swing your leg out like a side. So don't hold, then kick, rather oh, together. So it ends up looking like this. You grab, bring your hand here, swing it round, then place. Grab here, up, make sure it stays, swing, swing together, then down. One, two, and down. So what happens is that rotation of the hip and the leg coming out happen together. This is really important, right? Because otherwise it's the same as doing gyakuzuki like this. You want both to happen together as you go. So hip, body, leg, together. Ideally you want your hip moving as you hit the target. Give that a go, both legs, press pause. Excellent, okay so with, with that, the next step for you is now let's do it from the ground. So notice how you have this high and tight feeling. This feeling of being here, high and tight, high and tight, high and tight, right? This time, what I want you to do is I want you to have that same feeling, that same flatness, but what you're going to do is your hip is already going to be in motion, right? So the, the, at the moment, we've been sort of doing it as a um, disjointed kick. One, two, three, four, right? Now what I want you to try is I want you to try from here, think of it just like a punch, the hip and the punch initiate. Hip and the kick initiate. So as you go, kick high and tight. And what that's going to give the illusion, it's not going to look like it's loading to the back. But if I look at this, it is. It's just that my hips already started moving towards the target. Does that make sense? I'm not sort of ick, then starting the hip. Hips already rotating, allow the leg to come up, oh, bang, out. So allow this punching feeling, still loading high and tight. But allow, notice I'm not compressing, notice I'm not this, I'm simply dragging the leg with the hip. Dragging the leg with the hip. Dragging the leg. If you're lower ranked, if you need help to get your hips round, just swing. Have your hand here, 
and swing. Have your hand here and swing. Just think of hip. By the time the hip's finished its action, the kick's out. The kick is out. So here, so one, one, two, three, four. As you're more advanced, hold your ears and do the kick. If you're more, just hold. Hold your hands here. 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 This feeling. So hip, leg, body move together. Give that a go. Excellent. So the piece that becomes important at the end is you want, just like when you punch, you want the driving leg firing, the wrist turning, and the hip pushing in that last little piece. It's the same with the kick. At the point of contact, I want my rear leg connecting, I want my hip firing and connecting, and I want my leg hitting the target. So work on timing of breathe, technique, that end point, that end connection, that end connection, there, there, this feeling, but hip, foot, leg, turn, that feeling, turn, turn, Right? So what I would like you to do is work on that end point. Everything together. Breath helps you. All same. All same. Give it a go. Good. So a couple of drills that will help you that are, that are important. One, to help develop hip strength. Think about here. Loading, executing the kick. Boom, and then from whoop, and then from here, pull all the way back, right? Boom, pull all the way back. Boom, pull all the way back. Boom, pull all the way back. Have that feeling. That helps develop hip strength for the actual kick itself. And it becomes important. If you're in Kumite, you come out, oh, pump. Then you, this is easy, right? keeping that hip under control. So try kick all the way back. Now don't be lazy and look, Ma, I'm doing it. Don't this. Keep out all the way back. That same feeling. It's okay to be awkward as you do it. Have that feeling. Again, I'm accentuating my movements here so you can see them, but have that nice feeling out, back, not out and just drop. With that, give that a go. Excellent. So the last piece is in the step down. What you want to do is as you make that hit, you're in the final position for the kick, you've reloaded and snapped it back. From here, drive off the heel, body and hip. Down and in as it goes. So have the feeling of this kick, drive. Kick, drive, right, from there. So from the beginning, try it from Kamai. You're gonna notice that if your hands are moving, then what you can do, simply put Gyakuzuki out and leave it. Don't move your arms at all. Kick, drive, this feeling. Key thing is make sure that you're not kick this. It's all gotta happen as your body weight drives forward. So feel this, this transition, almost like here on the ondan, yeah? That same feeling, that same sort of under the ground push. So feeling here, rotate, push. So notice that it's of course, because your hip is already in shawman, you're simply lifting up. So this would be to the back. Normally notice it's that nice straight line. If my hips are in hummy, they can obviously load further back. This feeling. 
depending on where your hips are. So, with that, give the block, the kick punch, give that a go. Excellent. Okay, so to summarize, some things that are important with Mwashi is don't forget, it's not just a round and in kick. Because your foot is shifting on the floor, what's happening is my body center is shifting forward. If I start here, my body center is coming all the way to here by the time the kick goes. So the kick, yes, it's coming round like its typical name, but remember it's also driving in on this vector on a nine, on, so rather than coming straight into the target, it's more hitting this way with the way that we do it because of the body action. So when you're hitting something with it, yes, it can go straight round depending on how far I push the hips, but remember because I'm driving forward as well in my technique, I'm also driving in to the target. Here, here. So it is very much that feeling. And because we have that drive forward, you want to really think about it as just the derivation of Maigiri. Maigiri, of course, here, kicking under. You have, so Maigiri, straight in. You have Kirigiri, which loads and cuts up on the angle. And you have Mwashigiri, that cuts all the way around. They're all pieces of the same pie, right, depending on gaps that are available to you. Right, if they're open to the front, Maigiri guts straight in. If they've got the side on with this gap here, Kirigiri works well. If you want to get over the top, Mawashigiri works really well. But they're all derived from the same technique. They all feel very, very similar. And so with that, that's all we have for today. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. I was...